Hi everybody, this is Professor Day. I'm enjoying a beautiful, almost fall, uh, we're, we're almost to the equinox, uh, just before that, uh, late summer 2023, uh, sunset. It's beautiful out here. I'm also right next to a county road. You're gonna see a lot of traffic coming back and forth and hopefully it doesn't disrupt the video too much. But what I'm doing out here is taking an opportunity to explore what causes these soil cracks that form all throughout the Midwest of the United States. These soil cracks could be substantial, they can ruin foundations, they could do damage to driveways, they ruin county roads, they can ruin highways. They're a major nuisance. And one of the things that I wanted to do really quickly was demonstrate why these things form and really what can be done about it, if anything. Uh, and also the fact that they don't form everywhere. In California, you don't get these large cracks, especially in Southern California. Why is it that they don't form in Southern California to the same extent that they form in, say, Texas, Missouri, St. Louis, places like this? So that's what this video is about. Now, when you're thinking of ground cracks, one of the, one of the things that immediately comes to mind is you have these large chasms that seem to form when it's very hot, when it's uh, potentially when it's very dry. The question is, is it a combination of the two that's making the ground cracks form? Is it just seasonality? Is it just something that's inherent in the soil? Um, what I wanted to do is explore that a little bit in this video. Uh, what I want to do first is I want to follow a ground crack. I want to show you how big these things can get out here where I'm at. So I thought I'd go ahead and walk along a path of a major crack just to kind of show you how, how big of a deal these things are. You can even see the, the crack I have an interest in is right here, but you can see that this has been repaired over here. The road has been repaired and these two cracks parallel each other. You can barely see it because there's a little bit of grass growing in here, but uh, we're going to follow it over here. The crack is starting to show itself a little bit better right in this zone. Uh, it's got a nice little furrow that runs along here. It's running along this section here. And again, this has been corrected over here. So this is an ongoing problem that happens every year on this on this county road. The crack is obscured in the grass right here, but then look at this. It then runs over where that weed is. In fact, that weed is probably taking advantage of the fact that water is being collected and, and drawn into that crack. And so that weed's able to grow, especially large there. And then the crack moves out onto the pavement. This is a brand new built road. I'm gonna let this car go by here. But this is a brand new built uh, road and we can see that it's ripping quite a ways down there and it's offsetting things. In fact, we can, if we look carefully, see if we can get down here, we can see that this part of the road here has actually moved down about a half an inch relative to the other side and the crack gets quite large. Got another car coming in through here. Whenever you do geology near a highway, you have to come to expect that there's going to be people driving along here. So here we can see this road. This road is, again, it was built only about three years ago. We can look right down in here. And my hand for scale is showing how big this crack is. The crack then continues this way. And at this point, I can look down. You won't be able to see it here. But I can look down into this crack, oh, about two feet. And in some places over here, it gets to about four feet. Again, here's my hand for scale to show you how big that crack is. And then the crack moves all the way back onto the side over here and off into the grass. It's a massive thing. So there's a fairly easy way that we can go about confirming our hypothesis as to whether or not water or temperature is going to be playing a role in the formation of these deep cracks out here. And one of the best ways to do this is to actually look at some of the yards out in this neighborhood that I'm sitting in right now. This entire neighborhood has been under water restriction for the entire summer, and theoretically they're not allowed to water their lawns. It doesn't mean that some people aren't violating the restrictions. Um, as a consequence, we have one violator that's sitting right next to somebody that's complying and as such, we have an interesting opportunity to look at what a yard looks like when it's watered, but the temperature is exactly the same for both yards. 
And one of the things we realized pretty quickly is, is that the cracks formed in one yard and not in the other. Let's show you what I mean. So where we're at right here, this is a yard that has been watered uh, illicitly. Um, and as we're walking along here, the best way to see it is right here on the street. We can see, we see these stones. Here's the property edge right here. And then as we move into a property where they're complying, you'll see that there's a large crack that develops, not only in here into the, into the uh, yard, but also you can clearly see it running right along the side of the road. So it's pulling the soil away from the road. As you turn around this way, you can see that that disappears. There's no cracks over here. So we're clearly seeing cracks, no cracks. The only difference between these two yards has nothing to do with the temperature, has very little to do with the vegetation, and has everything to do with the fact that one is watering their yard and the other one is not watering their lawn. So it seems like the best explanation for why these large cracks tend to form in places like this is because of the dryness. It has actually very little to do with the heat, even though the heat is what's driving the dryness itself, right? It's evaporating off the water. It's not what's causing the soil to contract. It's the lack of water. So the question then is, is why does it happen in, say, Texas, Missouri, or Minnesota, but it doesn't happen in Southern California. And the explanation seems to be the mineral contents within the soil itself. Midwestern soils, especially the type of soils where I'm at right now, uh, in fact, that crack I was showing you earlier, it's located right over here, right behind me, uh, has a large amount of swelling clay in it. Swelling clay is a mineral structure, uh, it's a swelling mineral, in fact, that when it's dry, it expels or it evaporates off water and the whole structure collapses on itself. And so it becomes smaller. When it's not dry, when there's plenty of water uh, in the environment, it expands back out. And so we have clays that seasonally shrink and then they expand again, whether it's wet or whether it's dry. And of course it's an average, right? You can put a little bit of water on there, but if you put a lot of water for a long period of time, what will happen is the, the clays will start to swell. And that's something that a lot of the plants out here have to deal with seasonally, right? The contraction and the expansion seasonally of the soils upon its roots. And so there's that and there's pH issues that are also playing a role in plant growth. In Southern California, they don't have the same types of clays that they do here where I'm at right now. They're non-expansive. They have something called uh, a type of clay that's dominant is called kaolinite and it doesn't expand. You put water on it, it just stays there. It just stays the same, sh the, the same size because water does not creep into the structure. Whereas out here, the type of clay, the swelling clay type is called a smectite. And it doesn't take very much to make this happen, right? The entire road is not breaking up. Only the small edges, the fringes of it are breaking up and it's moving a few inches. Well, it's moving more than a few inches, probably about five to six inches in some places. But it's a substantial amount of surface area and those areas, those fringes, are what's moving back and forth and causing those cracks along the sides of the road. So the process of crack formation out here is actually quite interesting. What will happen is you start off in late spring or early summer with a nice flat surface that is completely consistent. And then what will happen is, is you will get a period of time where you have less rainfall, elevated temperatures come up and that promotes evaporation. And then what will happen is the clays will begin to expel the water uh, fractions that they possess out to the atmosphere. It'll evaporate them off. What will happen is, is those clays will start to contract. The surface will start to develop very small cracks. Those cracks won't be noticeable at first. But once a crack is started, it starts to open up another avenue for that evaporation to happen, right? This way you have one surface where the evaporation could happen. But if you go this way as well, you have suddenly another avenue. So Imagine a crack forming and as it's ripping down through the soil, it's opening up another avenue and so suddenly you can get very rapid uh, drying out of the soil, something called desiccation. Okay? That desiccation starts to set in and it starts to speed up the drying process. So the ground will start to form cracks and those cracks will open up very rapidly and they'll stay open throughout most of the summer and they can get quite deep as they propagate down into the upper parts of the soil horizon. In the area where I'm at right now, four feet is not unusual. It's actually pretty common where you got gaps in the soil down as far as four to six inches. 
Um, in fact, you worry about things like kids playing outside because they could trip and fall or, or something like this. It's already pretty hot out in this area. It can hit temperatures of about 110 degrees Fahrenheit in some summer, sometimes higher. 112 is not, uh, does happen from time to time. Um, but the way that these cracks form, and then what will happen is, is they will anneal, right? So they, they open up, they get quite deep, and then they will anneal themselves back up as water starts to come in in the early fall. In fact, just before I filmed this, the last couple of days it's been raining, you can see the cracks have not started to close all the way, but they are beginning to in certain areas, okay? Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this, learning about how these large monster cracks start to form throughout the Midwest and the kinds of damage they can do. Uh, and can anything be done about it? People in the Midwest, they water their foundations. Uh, if you can't water your foundation, you're going to get cracks in your foundation and your house isn't going to last very long. Anyways, thanks for joining me here next to this county road in the middle of the Midwest. I hope that you enjoyed learning about ground cracks. Take care.